Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to inform uh, everyone that Sean Driscoll, Authority's Communication Director, is making an audio and video recording of today's meeting. Is there anyone else making an audio recording of today's meeting? If so, please identify yourself. And if you're joining virtually, please press the raise your hand icon on the Zoom dashboard. Or if you're joining by phone, by pressing star nine on your keypad. And when you're recognized, please state your name for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanu, MB Times. Thank you. Jason. Good morning, everyone. Jason Grazia Day, Nantucket Current. Thank you. That's all, Rob. Okay, thank you. And good morning, everybody who's listening in. Uh, so pursuant to Section 20 of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, as amended, Port Council members are participating remotely in today's meeting because of their physical attendances today would be unreasonably difficult. All Port Council members in attendance and all members participating in the meeting by Zoom com video conferencing app will be clearly audible to each other. As a result of remote participation in this meeting, any and all votes taken by the members today shall be by roll call vote. Well, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, do I hear uh, any comments or a motion to approve the minutes from the September 10 meeting? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, let's do a roll call vote. Nat? Aye. Joe? Aye. John? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Eric? Aye. Munir, aye. Let's move to the management report. Bob, over to you. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, just mentioned uh, we're here in uh, the highest terminal uh, conference room. Um, so uh, Mark Higgins, Terrence Keneally, myself, uh, Mr. DeWicki, uh, Assistant Treasurer Courtney Oliveira, uh, Mark Rosam, Sean Driscoll, uh, Mr. J uh, Board Chair, uh, Bob Jones, uh, Janice Kenefick, uh, Stephen Coleman, and Tom Innes, and um, Sean um, Cameron. Cameron from IT. So, it's a very esteemed group. So, and um, first off we have is an update on the vessels, and Mark is, uh, uh, down in uh, Alabama, and uh, as an update. Good morning, everyone. Um, morning. As we have done well with uh, dodging, dodging Hurricane um, Helene, um, it does have an effect us on here because the Coast Guard uh, um, area down here has has input <laughs> into that area. So we'll go over the first slide on MV Aquino. All right. This is a picture. She's at Keyside in the uh, in, in the in the uh, Alabama shipyard. Uh, next slide, please. And we're getting ready. The all the stern end is ready. It's actually the scaffolding is coming off now uh, in preparation for the final painting of the uh, deck, blasting and painting of the deck in uh, bulwark areas. Next slide, please. Uh, this is kind of a view of into the passenger area. And uh, when we get to the Barnstable, you'll see the finished product. It'll be identical. So we're getting all the um, structural fire protection is installed. And these are the jointed panels, which are going in place. And this is the new entrance way into the forward bow thruster room. Next slide. And uh, this is, again, this is the... Uh, uh, water closets. Uh, this is the ADA water closet on the starboard side. Um, we've got some, uh, all the structural fire protection and the floors are, are poured. Next step is uh, finishing wire and installation of the joiner work. Next slide. So with uh, the Aquina upcoming milestones, uh, the, the engine starts uh, are scheduled for the 10th of October. Mechanical and accommodations complete 15 October. Incline stability test is the 18th of October. And then depending on 
the arrival of uh, approved documents from the stability test and uh, it's what the SSAC trial and U.S. Coast Guard sea trials to be determined and departure. Um, she is right now probably somewhere, I'm going to say 40 to 45 days behind the uh, Barnstable in completion. Um, there is no work on the Barnstable going on. All the crews are on the Aquina. And uh, let's get to the uh, Barnstable uh, slides. So this is her key side. She is 100% complete. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, passenger area uh, that's complete. Next slide. This is the new crew accommodations up on the uh, forecastle deck area. Uh, you can see the refrigerators, uh, tables. It's a very attractive uh, space for the crews. Next slide. Uh, this is kind of looking at the back area. This will be the uh, the passengers' uh, embarkation into the passenger area will be on the starboard side. Next slide. And this is uh, the ADA uh, um, lavatory on the starboard side. Next slide. Uh, just as is, uh, crews have been drilling, uh, you know, in preparatory for the uh, um, sea trials. And this is a faster rescue boat after being launched off the uh, new Davit. Next slide. So where we are with the uh, Barnstable is um, the shipyard is complete, and uh, we're we're giving a uh, we're awaiting the uh, the trim and stability test outcome. Uh, we're still waiting for that, along with what's called design verification test procedures. They've been as a result of we have a lot of new equipment installed, including new emergency. Uh, steering systems and also for the main switchboard we have a new bassler automated automated startup for the uh, generators and we're going through and awaiting for from back from u.s coast guard marine safety center the results for the uh, uh, for the various testing as i just described and as soon as we receive that we'll be able to go on our sea trial so we are complete on barnstable and just waiting to do our sea trial Okay, let's move on to the Monomoy. The Monomoy is, she's up on the hard and is uh, right now she's undergoing uh, gas freeing. She'll be Monday, the, uh, she'll be, excuse me, uh, Thursday, she'll be complete on a clean and gas freeing. We'll be able to start the hot work on the uh, that project. Uh, next slide. Okay, this is the Monomoy on the dock. I think we've had this, I saw that uh, slide previously in a previous port council. Next slide. Uh, we've got all the uh, propeller blades have been removed and have been sent out for reconditioning. Next slide. So where we are with the Monomoy project. Uh, so she arrived at the shipyard on the 9th, dry docked on the 20th of August, and the project commenced on the 21st. We're online in our dates for cleaning gas free of 4 October. Um, later this month, they have scheduled the mid body removal. Um, so, new, new bulwarks and stern, they're already under fabrication in the steel shop. They'll be complete by the 8th. And looking forward, the um, stability test is May of 25 and sea trials in June of 25. So as far as a uh, where we are with the project, we have the uh, three projects here with the Barnstable and Aquina at 13.7 million each and the Monomoy at 13 million. We have 2.7 million in change orders for the uh, Aquina and 3.135 million for the Barnstable. And we have not um, we have approximately 600,000 in credits coming back for each of the projects. And that is the current standing and be well if some people have any questions. Questions from the Port Council? Just real quick, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Mark A, <laughs> for all this work. Um, 
what are we looking at? Do you think on that letter coming back from the Coast Guard or wherever that comes from? The uh, in regards to the stability it, letter, it, it, yeah, because that's the, technically what we're waiting for now, other than the crewing capability part to get it up here, right? We have the right now. We have the crews to do here to do the sea trials uh, for our, our own sea trials and for the uh, U.S. Coast Guard. We're we're just waiting on the go ahead. In regards to the stability letter, all of our numbers for preliminary came back matching up. Uh, we're actually I, I feel like a broken record here because uh, I don't have any control of when that letter yeah. comes out, but we're expecting it to be in line with our original numbers based on the uh, the light ship values of the vessel and the other important components such as um, the uh, center gravities and the total you know di total amount of weight so we we we're waiting impatiently at this point is the best way to say yeah. it Not yeah patiently anymore. no I got you I wasn't I didn't mean yeah. to say it like that but just hoping sometime and before Christmas that'll be that we get the boat up here hopefully yeah you know, we we need we need to the storms dropping left and right of us here we need to get yeah. those trials done and get her moving up but just like that it's not just me down here we have a, a large team down here our port engineers our our ship staff chief engineers and captains all doing a fantastic job yep thank you very much yep thank you Mr. Chairman, if I could ask a question, please. Yes, go ahead, Eric. Um, Mark, what is the status on the delivery crew? I know there were some questions about that. Um, the Coast Guard requiring STCW certification for the delivery. And it was I really didn't understand exactly via the hearsay. So if I could get it from your mouth as to what the, the status is and what the plan is. Well, right now, our status is we've been supported by um, um, Hornbeck Offshore Services, and uh, those are the previous operators, and it's worked very well up here as the crew that we have in support of our, excuse me, our captains and chiefs. They've been on the vessels before, and it's been fantastic because they've been actually helping us train ourselves. So uh, that is the plan for moving them back up here we're still challenged obviously with uh you know crewing for our regular vessels we're trying not to interrupt that at the and use uh hornbeck to assist us thank you so, so hornbeck will be doing the delivery no it's going to be us and we'll get supplemented and we've been supplemented by the hos crews okay. great thank you other questions no just to thank you mark nice job Let's get them up there and get them in operation, then and we'll go further on that. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Okay, Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with getting the boat, the first one out. Thank you. All right, bye. Bob, back to you. All right, so next, I uh, just wanted to give you a brief update on the website uh, redesign, and uh, Stephen Coleman's coming up. Um, Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Dwicky. I'm well, morning, thank Steve. you. How are you? Good morning. Next slide, please. So at this point in time, I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with this slide. Starting July 8th, uh, the final phase of the project started, um, deemed program governance. And um, this phase of the project dealt with development issues, uh, quality assurance, uh, functional testing, automated testing, security, uh, and load testing, to name a few. Uh, brought uh, all the players, all the all the resources allocated to this project um, uh, in a room together, working day in, day out for three months uh, in anticipation of um, successful load, load testing, and launch, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Um, 
during the final two two weeks, and uh, I, I announced this last at the at the bar, at the board meeting, so this will not come as a surprise to anybody. But um, after uh, configuration of um, for security and to support uh, high demand um, in the final two weeks of of the uh, project, um, the load testing didn't go as anticipated. Um, there were um, certainly concerns that it wouldn't perform and the amount of, um, of, of work in order to make it performative to the point that would be um, functional for our user community uh, within a general opening, which is uh, extremely high demand, um, didn't seem likely um, without considerable amount of work uh, and resources and time uh, continuing uh, in the vein in which we had for the, for the last year. So it was uh, it was decided amongst the executive management. Sure. <laughs> so so it was decided amongst the executive management and senior management to postpone the 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 effort. Um, the The benefit to this is <clears throat> all the resources allocated to this project can be reallocated elsewhere, uh, where um, where it's where it's more important at this point in time. Uh, the bulk's process, uh, which is a prerequisite to opening, the the um, performance tuning, and load testing of the current website, again a prerequisite to general opening, and certainly um, um, for the RFP process, advertisement, bid of the reservation system, and um, uh, to get that going sooner rather than later and um, work on the complement of hardware uh, that is required to get that project to be a success. Um, I'm open to any questions you may have. Questions from members of the board council. Too much, too much quietness here. <laughs> let's let's give you an opportunity to you know feel good about this. How are you feeling about it? Where this is going. I've only been with the company a year and a quarter, so it's um, a long time. It is, it is, uh, but certainly not as long as others on the project. Um, for me, it's a business decision. It's the best business decision that we could make uh, in order to really focus all the resources necessary for the future reservation system, um, which we hope goes far differently. Uh, there are others in the project that have been from the start, long-term employees, invested in the project for three years that I know it hit extremely hard uh, due to their hard work their, uh, and due to their work and commitment. Uh, this project did nearly succeed. It just, in the end, uh, it was apparent that the project as a whole over the long haul just wasn't managed uh, well enough to meet that to make that determination. Uh, we will do a post mortem, and I anticipate uh, providing Bob with uh, results of kind of an overview of, of my point of view. Sure. So, so how are you creating an environment where they feel support or supported? Excuse me. Um, in terms of uh, building the rail, getting people excited about. You know the future uh, moving forward. Um, breaking the news to them is hard. Uh, seeing, 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 seeing how they re re responded in some instances uh, was hard. Uh, there are others that I think are uh, appreciative of the fact that the difficult times uh, they could move on from such difficult times and focus on the the task at hand, which is which which are many. Uh, I didn't. I didn't necessarily have to uh, pat people on the back. I think people understand that uh, business is business, and we move on to the next project. Uh, I've seen. Uh, I've seen. Uh, I haven't seen at this point anyone carrying um, uh, their concerns forward. I think everyone's in a, in a very, very, very good place at this point in time. The important to tell you the truth. When, once, once it was over, I think people were relieved. It just it just took a couple of a couple if not a few days to to recognize that it was the 
it was uh, the right the right decision for everybody involved. Thank you. Yeah. But should point out that the the, the, the project itself, uh, while it's being postponed, it'll, it'll, as we once we select a reservation system vendor, we'll be looking at uh, how to integrate what we have with the, with the new reservation system vendor. So. Um, it's just a matter of right now that the resources that are necessary to determine you know what what we need from the res a reservation system and evaluate any proposals that we received, those resources are also the resources that have been on the website. So we allocate those those, those people's times. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think John was first. John. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. Either way. Um, okay. Well, um, I support the decision, and Stephen, I know it's a hard one, but I think it's a wise one and a smart one. Um, a couple of questions is, how are we going to unravel our relationship with stellar elements, and what's that going to look like? We are, we happen to be on, uh, so they, they, they were in a support contract <clears throat> for the last year. Yeah. That support contract auto-renewed. Um, it's only for six months. Uh, I don't think there's, I wouldn't, I, I personally wouldn't um, use the, the, the terminology unravel. Um, we can continue with them. Uh, they can continue with us and we can decide within a, within a 60 day period of time to no longer have a relationship with them and they can do the same. Is, is there work to do? There is, there actually is. Okay. As as Bob as Bob stated, um, this the 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 website specifically is only postponed. The byproduct of all the work over the last three years is still intact. It's just not being being utilized at the moment. Um, Tom Ennis, who's who's right after me, I'm sure will will give you a, uh, an overview of uh, when he believes things should start to some extent, in in small part. Um, we don't anticipate we don't anticipate it being shelved all that long, because we have to uh, work on a shippers portal. Folks, we need to we need to rip out the code that makes the reservation system work within the website, in in anticipation of new code being put in its place. And the current contract with Stellar Elements ends. You said six months. When does that six month and uh it started it starts today the, the the new contract i believe starts today so six months from today all right thank you mr chair yep joe my only comment was i think it was a very difficult decision to make but i think it was the right decision thank you joe gordon uh, yeah, I would I would echo that. These things are never uh, easy, but um, as as you go out for the reservation system, um, presumably the RFP will be explicit that whatever reservation system that is uh, created will integrate with the website that is currently under design. Right? We don't we that 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 has to be the case, right? You can't have somebody propose a reservation system that needs a different website structure for it to work, right? We need to make sure that they're gonna, we're not gonna lose all of this effort and whatever reservation system vendor will integrate with what we've, the work you guys have already done. Yes? That is correct. Um, as I mentioned, Tom Ennis is next. Um, he's put together uh, a comprehensive technical and function, functional requirements document that will go out to all bidders and they'll, 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 uh, They'll provide in information enough for us to, to make a good decision. Thanks. Thanks for sure. Thanks, Gordon. Stephen, a question for me. Um, I know you haven't done your postmortem, but uh, what sort of how would you visualize managing this project when it gets reopened in terms of this project specifically and also the integration or the connection to the reservation system? Yeah, um, there there are going to be many parallel streams running at once, which which is which kind of comes back to the website. 
uh, for the most part, there was kind of there was like a se sequential stream that took place over time uh, that forced a lot of work towards the very end. And it was probably due in part to project management, but also in part uh, due to uh, uh, resource allocation, you know, lack of resources, or could be competing competing resources, competing competing work. So I think we will take a good view, we'll take a good view of what took place here. I think we will uh, attempt to identify all the factors that led us to postpone and try to address each and every one. But I think the most important thing we, we need to do, we need to start early. We need to get the appropriate resources in place, whether that be contract, whether it be internal, and we need to uh, put parallel streams in place to get things done uh, far more timely and early in the project than we, than we did last. Thanks. I guess just a thought, and I don't know how the rest of the board council uh, feels about this. We do have expertise here. You know, our role is oversight and advice, not management. But I think at some level, uh, having visibility of the postmortem and an opportunity to uh, review and discuss it uh, prior to uh, firmly establishing the way things are going to go forward uh, might be an area where we could provide some uh, contribution. Absolutely. Okay. And I don't know if others on the port council feel the same way, but it, it seems like this is such an, a critical project and one obviously that, uh, you know, we need to be careful of and take care of. Yeah, I'm, Rob, I would support exactly what you just said. And I think that uh, having talked to Tom and to Stephen in the past couple of weeks, they're already underway in doing such a thing. So um, we look forward to getting that information. Uh, but it's the right decision. Yeah, I think uh, I think we all recognize that. Yeah. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. you Stephen. If, if, if you don't mind, I just want to I just want to thank. I said at the at the board meeting, uh, thanking the board for their patience. I want to thank uh, again the poor council for extending uh, that three months, giving us an opportunity to really focus on the project at hand and making a, a solid determination. But uh, lastly, what I didn't, who I didn't recognize uh, to Mr. Dewicki's point uh, was all the hard work, all, all the individual contractors, employees that uh, worked on this for as long as they did. I know it was hard for them to, uh, to see it get postponed. Um, so I just wanted to thank them personally. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so next up is, um... As Stephen alluded to, is uh, Tom Innes to provide us with a brief update on the IP review. Yeah, so uh, we've been working through the the RFP. Um, we have approximately uh, 600 requirements, so I thought I'd just go through each one in detail. Does that sounds good to everybody? Yeah. Um, okay, great. How much time is your name? Uh, all right. So um, actually, you know, uh, building on what what uh, what what Steve said, um, so we've been able to make strong progress, especially with the with the pause on the website and have really had a lot of, you know, creative, uh, you know, engaging discussions with the with the internal team going through the, di the different components. Um, so. At this point, you know, from our perspective, making you know really solid progress with the the RFP draft, with the uh, you know, in our opinion, um, you know, the we're we're on track to to post in November, um, and what what has become clear to us is you know with with the timeline, with you know trying to you know, look at this as, you know, how quickly can we get off the legacy systems to the new system um, and and looking at how to do that quickly um, to, uh, you know, to, to fast forward with what does the, the project need as a, as a project. And so we've been developing a project charter, uh, refining the, the scope and goals of the project, 
Um, and then also, you know, working now to refine you know, what what is the project team, who's going to be part of this, especially as you know, resources have been been freed up from the website. Uh, you know, defining roles and responsibilities, um, as well as refining the budget, refining the timeline, um, because um, as as we've kind of talked about, right, the this is really a you know, from our perspective, it's a transformational project that the um, as you can see on the on the next slide, the um, the reservation system is is really just one component of this project, and the in order for the reservation system to be successful, really thinking about what are all those other pieces that need to come together, and a big part of it is. We just lost you guys. Yeah. You locked up. For those of you in Hyannis, I don't know if you can hear us, but we cannot hear you and you appear to be frozen. I guess we're having an executive session. Yeah, we could have our own meeting. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Maybe Now's our chance. Maybe, Maybe not. No. Now's our chance. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't get practice. me started. I've been trying to keep quiet. <laughs> Nat, trying. You've, been doing, you've been doing good, oh, Matt. You've been doing good. Try, Matt. Me meeting isn't over yet, though. It's uh, just there's, there's so many, there's so many things I'd rather not talk about any of it, honestly. <laughs> there are 17 attendees with us. Uh, how about Pete Rose, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he'll be in post hum humously, humusly, however they pronounce that. Yeah. You watch. He'll be in. I, ho I hope so. You know why he'll be in, John? Because it'll be, there'll be, there's so many other issues with especially with the steroid era which is which will that will also fix itself you'll have clemens in at some point yeah it'll have it has to happen because yeah. he was so good doesn't matter about whatever happened i just think that rose by beating T ty cobb right i mean okay what if somebody actually had more than 511 wins which will never be broken by the way but i'm just saying let's just say yeah. like yeah. Okay. So that person did something that's wrong, but like that didn't mean anything. Hi guys. Sorry, we're having five hundred wins. <laughs> there you we're go. Problems here in the room. So uh, hold tight. We'll be back with you hopefully shortly. Yeah, right. Okay, there. Sean. Thank you. Hey. Anybody? We're talking baseball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Bachi Bachi Amati did. Bachi Amati did you're one. still public. Don't forget. So. <laughs> That's why we're talking baseball. Don't say anything bad about you, Sean. <laughs> hey, listen, yesterday I was at a guy's house and I said something. You, can't, you guys are going to love this. Speaking of baseball, I said, gee, you sound like a Boston guy. He goes, actually, I'm from New York. I was like, oh, my God, your voice sounded like a Boston guy. <laughs> it was like insulting. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He sounded Bostonian. So I guess, you know. Hey, back to Pete Rose. Wasn't he actually voted and he almost got in 15, 20 years ago? Like it was a three to two vote or something? Is, yeah, something happened. Yeah. I, I don't close. know exactly. But but our vineyard resident, Bachi Amani, didn't like him. And that's he's the one that really pushed it so he so he didn't get in. Yeah. When he was, uh, when he was uh, president head of the uh, head of baseball commissioner. Oh yeah. Huh. You know. It, oh god i mean look at like jim rice right here's a guy that was tore the league up for 10 years 
but he didn't hit 400 homers. He batted 299 and a quarter. He didn't hit 300. It was just yeah. a smidgen under 300. But he was clean. And he was good. Yeah. Real good. And he didn't get in till like, what was it, like 20 years? Like, he no, retired in 89, been. right? He, yeah. It took a long time for him to get in. It was almost 20 years for him to get in. It was almost yeah. 20 years for him to get in. And I think he was in the, isn't there a, like a, an end, Joe, or something? Like, you can't there is, get in there after, is after so, so many years. Yeah. But then they can go in as a, uh, there's another oh, category right. that they have for him. Yeah. yeah. No, baseball is, baseball is my sport. Ted Williams is my idol. <sighs> Last hit was a home run. That's right. 521, dude. Yep. That's 1960, neat. and there were 6,000 people that were there, but 60, 600,000 say they saw it. <laughs> well, they're making that up. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they booed him. Like, you oh, we've been, we've like been asked, yes. We've been asked to mute for a second. Oh, okay. Try to behave, gentlemen.
We're actually seeing motion. Are you guys hearing us? <laughs> hmm. Rob, why not uh, continue this meeting and just have a joint one with the board when they meet in two weeks? Well. At this point in time. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess I'll give them a few more minutes, but you might be uh, onto something if we can't make this work. But let's just see what happens. I tend to turn into a pumpkin at 11, so. Uh, well, both of us. <laughs> we're going to have to, uh, I think, establish a constraint on the on the back end of this hold on hi guys sorry we're still working here stand stand tight Roger that.
Rob, can you hear us? Oh, that might be me. Roger that. Okay, I had to switch. Let me reset the owl. Maybe that was the problem. I switched microphones. I reset the owl. Sure. Yeah. That's part of it. That's the only way to get a piece of these code by others. No. Wouldn't I still need to check both on me? I think I'm Wi Fi at the moment. I mean, I'm plugged in, but I switch. It says I'm connected to the guest Wi Fi. Yeah. Rob, can you hear us? No. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes. We're back. Mm. Can't get the video going. You can share the screen. I don't think I don't have video, but I've got audio. Can Can everyone hear us? We can yes. hear you. Apparently, we're having a bandwidth issue. We can't do video. Okay. There's a certain there's a certain irony to having the topic be our IT system and with <laughs> have our meeting. I think it was Mr. Rose who pulled the plug on it because he, the budget was coming up. So ah, uh, okay. So are you proposing we continue with that video? Yes. If everyone's fine with that. Uh, I think we are. I, I think we do have a general consensus that we'd like to try to finish by 11. Uh, we, we recognize you. We just uh, gave up about 20 minutes, but is well, that a well, Tom, Tom was all done. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, as as I was saying, uh, we have video back now. We have video. 163 uh, <laughs> user. Oh, sorry. Um, the uh, all right. The uh, so, right, this oh, is it. We are recording, correct, Sean? Yes. We never stop recording. Okay. Okay. okay go. Um, so, as I was saying, the right one component of this project is the reservation system. The There's a number of different projects that all need to happen and come together for this to work. For instance, a network assessment and enhancement to ensure that uh, the new reservation system, um, you know, the intent is for it to be hosted in the cloud. And so we need to be able to connect to said cloud um, and and make sure that, right, the, uh, that the, not just that folks are able to go in and make a reservation, buy tickets, but also that the the speed of the network and systems allows for the scanning of tickets, you know, down by the terminal, allow for the speed of, you know, boarding the 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 boats. So, the um, that that's one one effort. Some of the others are, um, you know, looking at data migration. How can we move data from the old system to the new? Integration with the website has already been discussed, um, and um, and then in parallel with this, because, because there's a lot of change associated with this, also thinking about how do we continuously uh, manage and inform not just internal mm -hmm. users, but also external users and, and continue to get their feedback. So mm -hmm. this is hard, uh, but this is also very doable to do this well, really needs alignment across the whole project. And so we've developed a governance model that guides uh both you know how we work but also how we communicate so on the next slide um putting together you know an executive steering committee for the project having a a, a clear project sponsor to offer oversight clear vision for the for the project um and then a project management office to bring together all these different work streams coordinating resources both internal and external because remember 
the um the this isn't just working with the reservation system vendor this is going to be working with nearly every systems vendor that you have uh at the at the steamship authority um and making sure that that all the pieces you know come together for testing and then and then for launch and then uh, we've started to define what are some of the project teams that need to come together and reflecting the that right one piece of this is technical having you know we're proposing two different teams focused on operations one focused on the public customer experience another focused on the commercial shipper experience <laughs> then and then uh, another focused on on accounting the now there may be you know Various sub teams, especially within the you know the technical team, uh, there's a lot of parts to to come together, and so having having clear again clear uh, you know task alignment and clear understanding what what the critical path is to to get this to all work. Um, so next steps: uh, finalize the RFP, um, continue to refine the the team and the governance model, and then. Um, you know, from our perspective, the, the project really starts now. The that now is the time to start some of these other work streams that need to happen. They don't need to wait for the vendor, and so there's no reason to to wait for them now. Um, uh, and uh, Steve had already mentioned, right? There's you know, working on things like like bulks, and so redesign and rethinking of what the shipper experience can be. All that thinking and processing can happen now as we then prepare for uh, the vendor to come on board and as we go through the 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 procurement process. Uh, questions, comments? Yes, Rob, if I may. Questions, comment. Yep, Eric, go ahead. This is great, you know, seeing it flow. I, I think one of the concerns that I would have is to make sure that you're putting more emphasis in this design framework for customer service and not only the external customers, but your internal customers. And I don't know if that's framed because I haven't seen your project yet, but I think please, please, please make sure customer service is your number one priority and both externally and internally. Um, you know, you, you have your internal customers that have to work with this system every day. They've got experience, they've, they've got industrial knowledge as to what they think might work best. Um, make sure everybody gets interviewed, make sure they're happy, make sure they feel supported, supported, but you know, they are just as important as the external customer, mm -hmm. uh, to make it all flow. Right. And, and, you know, mission driven concepts. Right. And I think this is really uh, a great step forward, but always with that underlining factor that customer service is, is the number one priority. Yeah, thanks for that. And that that has been a major focus of the discussions that we've been having internally as we've been refining the requirements is really taking a look at, okay, where, where did maybe we made decisions because of what the technology today could do and instead okay how do we what's what's the desired customer experience and then how how do we translate that to the to the future system vendor i, I think identifying those customers really upfront and personal you know is, is going to be the key to the success for this for the next 20 years and i think it's uh this is a good move forward and you know just please don't forget why we're doing Other comments, questions from uh, members of the board council? John, you look like you're leaning in. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm mute. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Tom, thanks for the presentation. What are your immediate next steps? So immediate next steps are we've got uh, a few more meetings uh, internally to define, refine the requirements, um, and then uh, going through, you know, uh, getting, um, you know, executive sign off and, um, and, and as quickly as possible, getting the, the RFP out to market. 
because uh, we're we're in a period where the we're trying to line up with the the windows that of 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 launching, and given that those don't come around very often, where there's kind of a lull between the seasons, um, you know, there's a we're trying to manage that risk of, you know, pushing pushing out the RFP by several weeks has the potential of pushing the project six months. So right. trying to to manage that. Okay. And then uh, are you still on a timeline that would be November for the RFP to go out? Uh, right now, we, we think that is possible. Okay. And then finally, last question is, what do you need from the Port Council today to help you get there? Do you need anything from us today? Uh, I mean, I think today it, it's, it's, you know, um, that if this, you know, if what we've put together resonates, then um, the, you know, agreement that that we should move forward and really be, you know, approaching this as, you know, the project starts now, yeah. as opposed to the project starts when the vendor comes on board. Got it. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Is it a general consensus that we give uh, uh, Tom the uh, that notion of support? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Okay, very much so. Yes, we have a unanimous consensus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Except thank you very much. Bob, back to you. So uh, next, um, this is uh, an uh, update on the Woods Hole Terminal Project, and uh, I don't see Sean, Sean on there. So Sean texted me; he's out sick today. I'll I'll take it. So the first slide you see is an aerial view of the reconstruction project in the upper right hand corner. You can see the work going on currently with the utility building, as well as some of the geothermal well drilling um, to the left of that. Next slide. Uh, this is the geothermal well drilling. We had 27 wells total. We did 20 of them before the summer season. We had seven to finish up this past fall. Uh, this was completed last week, and we'll begin uh, with the lateral uh, piping over the next two weeks. This is the uh, third wall uh, concrete pour. Um, this happened back on the 18th of September. And here's some of the electrical conduits being installed and the waterproofing and the backfill that will be going in there on that wall. Here you get a sense of the scale. You have the overhead door openings for the utility building. Next slide. And the rebar installed for the final tall section of the utility building. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, when we look at the schedule, uh, we have structural steel being mobilized this week. And uh, the erection of that structural steel will take place over the next seven to 10 days. As I said, the geothermal wells have been completed. Uh, lateral start this week. And we'll be looking at temporary fencing going up after Columbus Day weekend around the 16th. Uh, right now, um, the uh, project is 32134000 We've had uh, three change orders and two credits that net out to a $3,175 increase. We're 0.01% of the project. So right now we're at 32 million, 137, 706. Any questions? Any questions from uh, members of the board council? Mark, just to, to refresh our collective memories, the 32 million includes the, the utility building, the geothermal, the site work, and the terminal itself. That's correct. 
and the timetable approximately? Right now we're on a timetable to finish in April of 2026. Okay. And just at a high level, the the scheduling relative to off season and next summer in terms of ramping up, ramping down, whatever. So the majority of the construction that would uh, impact the terminal has to take place in the off season, of course. And so we'll um, finish some uh, erection of the utility building. Uh, we'll be working in conjunction at the same time on the terminal building, getting the foundation in, uh, start erecting the walls. And that way next summer, we can do a lot of the inside work and not be impacting uh, operations out there. So it's really a timing issue. So the temporary terminal building will be in place until next winter? It'll be in place through uh, final construction and moving into the uh, terminal building in, in April 2026. Okay. All right, thanks. Just a little, little refresher to have some context. Thank you. Okay, hearing uh, no further questions, uh, let's go to the next item on the agenda. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. All right, so the next item on the agenda is something that uh, Board Council Member uh, Nat Lowell had uh, asked us to look into. And um, when was this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nat. I'm keeping uh, up so with what, which thing it is, Bob. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so this is the revision to the 2025 late summer operating schedule for the Native yeah. Uh So we're presenting for the approval of the following revisions to the 2025 late summer operating schedule to the Nantucket route. Uh, we've discussed some changes to be, to be made in the schedule due to demand and potential staffing issues. Uh, the staff is looking at changing the MB Barnstable from triple crew to two single crews. This would take the vessel from three trips a day, seven days a week, to three trips a day, Monday through Friday, Tradi for traditional ferry service on traditional ferry service on the weekends would be limited to the MV Eagle and the MV Woods Hole. So we're recommending this minor adjustment to the 2025 late summer operating schedule for the Nantucket route. Mr. Chairman, can I just Add to what Mark is saying. Yep, please do. Thanks. Mark H. Yep, go ahead. This is going to be a long thing with this whole Mark abbreviation thing going on. Um, so, okay. Oh, and Mark R. Plugged me in here when I'm saying something out of sequence. So, right now, when we had to make the decision month ago, three weeks ago, whenever it was about removing the triple crew from the gay head right now on this particular schedule to plug in the 7.30 hat fast boat, which we need desperately to run. It's, it's working fine, right? But that's, that was the quick solution. So after discussing with management more options, especially when you know, when you're looking at a year from now and you know that by that time we should, you know, obviously the Bonneville is going to be here. It's going to be a completely different system. The most of the truck traffic is during the week. And we need to be able to, you know, essentially have the summer schedule five days a week. That's what we're looking at. Okay. Um, but on the weekends, we're removing gas from Saturday morning for this, what is this, seven weeks, Mark? Not, I don't even know. Is it nine weeks? What is it, like eight or nine weeks? Or this is? About 40 days, 40, yeah, 46 40 weeks. weeks. Yeah. So this is a, you know, kind of a sort of a remake of our Flathers stuff uh, in a new era with the new boats, bigger, more uh, efficiency, and a, a quick stab at it before we even get them. And then possibly, you know, looking at it more through November down the road, you know, following 26 schedule. But at, at this point, if let's say we have bad weather 
like we did the other day and we have all these cancellations. It's going to work when we, we will be able to call in a crew to run the basketball on a weekend day. That's okay. the part that Mark is not saying yet. So I'll say it first so that that gets said in a different way. It's not that the boat can't run. It just won't be scheduled to run, but it still can. And that's a, the key is to be able to, to keep everything moving during the week. The commerce, the, the truck, everything's got in that way. With that new boat, we're going to be able to book more gas trucks for five days before the winter comes and it will it'll it'll make everything still work okay and it's going to be a you know we definitely going to have the woods hole in the fall again or is that possibly going to be the quinta or the or the other boat what are you suggesting right now it's that right now it's the woods hole okay because that is helpful for the traveling public to have that boat running opposite the eagle it right now like it is right today this schedule that we're on now so otherwise if we had triple crew i mean we just don't need that much service this time of year that boat will be sitting in hyannis with a crew that isn't running this way the boat will be running and bookable and then on the weekends it'll be more as needed with that boat if, if there was a need to call a crew in but otherwise you won't have those gas trucks clogging up the two trips on saturday so this is going to be helpful there'll be more cars to be able to book and um i think it'll be a lot better okay so i guess that's my simple layman's way of explaining it <clears throat> Thanks, Matt. Okay. Any other discussion? It, are you guys looking for a particular action from the Port Council? Yes, we would be looking for a recommendation from the Port Council to uh, have the board approve this change. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, recommend this change. Second. Okay, let's do a roll call vote. Matt? Aye. John? John, you're on mute. Aye. It looked like an aye, but I just had to be sure. <laughs> Joe? Aye. Gordon? Aye. Eric? Aye. Munir? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. We're all very confident when we have Matt to help us uh, <laughs> interpret these uh, arcaneries. The schedule it, and, and just, totally. and the just like, amendment. not that I want this meeting to go because I have a, another meeting I have to be at at 11. And this, but this is a piece of a bigger solution to the shoulder season, sort of revamping things a little bit with these different boat mixes and the, and the changes in the needs. When we flip the switch October 21st to the you know, so-called winter schedule, I guess we'll call it. We don't really know what that's going to look like this year yet. We don't know if we're going to have the Barnstable. So if we have just the gay head and the eagle, like, you know, the last 20 years, you go from a lot of service to kind of a the lowest schedule. We have to find some middle ground stuff like we did back you know 15 20 years ago when we started doing that single crew stuff during the week so that's what what's really happening here this isn't like rocket science right this second this is sort of just an adjustment for a future re you know kind of re-examining things looking at numbers and that's what they're good at doing but unfortunately these schedules come out over a year in advance which is the problem sometimes so thanks, Bob. You got anything else to add? Am I saying anything wrong? I don't think uh, so. Not, not, on, <laughs> not on this particular right. <laughs> <laughs> not on this one. Not yet. Okay. All right. All right. Now, thank you. All right. So I think we're 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 done with that item. Uh, next item in the. Uh, okay. The so I I know everyone's anxious to get to the budget here, so I'll, I'll make it quick. Mm. Um, this is just a, a, an announcement that, uh, you know, it's that time of year again that we'll be needed to requalify 
um, our customers in the excursion in preferred programs. So uh, just a little background, there's uh, just under 15,000 profiles right now in our system uh, that are uh, excursion eligible profiles. Um, split about 62% uh, percent of them are, are billion um, residents and uh, 40, uh, 38 percent on Nantucket. There's an, uh, over three, just over 3,000 um, preferred eligible profiles in uh, 2024. Um, in terms of the, uh, uh, over the past four years, we have seen an increase of about, on average, about 200 profiles per year uh, being added to the excursion program. Um, and in order to get on that, um, the customer needs to be on the, the street list for the, uh, for the towns on the islands. They need to have a Massachusetts driver's license with an island address. They need to have a Massachusetts vehicle registration with an island address. Um, that's for the excursions. For the preferred, uh, they can be year-round or seasonal residents, but they have to identify the settled place of abode as being on the island. They need two types of documents that have been issued in the past 30 days, electric bill, uh, cable bill, things like that. And they also need to have their Massachusetts vehicle registration. Um, so the accounts are, uh, are valid for two years uh, to be eligible for the 2025 preferred and excursion programs. We'll be sending renewal applications to all, all those uh, accounts that end with an even number. It's 2024, so the even numbered profiles need to be requalified. Um, as those will expire at the end of the year. So um, just uh, we'll be uh, doing that. We'll be putting out notices and um, uh, at the terminals and um, we'll, we're looking into having um, uh, some on-island assistance as well. So but that's what we have on that. Any questions or comments from uh, members of the board council? Just want to say thank you, Bob. I think there's a need here on the vineyard to have somebody here with assistance, and that will free up the agents, uh, the ticket takers and stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, he hearing nothing more on that, uh, let's move to the meat of the matter, which is the uh, business report and the budget. <laughs> So we'll go over the business summary for the month of August 1st. So for the month of August, uh, for both routes combined, passengers we found just over 5,000 passengers at 1.2%, with the Vineyard route being up 1,100 passengers and the Nantucket route being down just over, just under 6,300 passengers. Year to date, uh, passengers are statistically flat or up 522 passengers with the Vineyard route up just over 14,000 passengers, the Nantucket route down 13.7 thousand passengers. Passenger vehicles carried uh, for the month of August. Uh, we saw all categories on the Vineyard route up 1.4% combined or 812 vehicles. The Nantucket route was down 14.8% or uh, 1,672 vehicles and combined for the month, we're down 1.2%. Um, as a reminder, the Nantucket route is down. That's due to the schedule change, uh, primarily with the uh, changing of the Woods Hole and the Sanctity on the operations run. That's where we're seeing where the freight got adjusted first and then the vehicles uh, who didn't have reservations um, were adjusted second. But year to date, passenger vehicles for both routes combined are down 3.8% at just over 15,000 passengers. Um, the Nantucket route is down 8.9% and the Vineyard route is down 2.9%. Freight vehicles, and again, all these passenger statistics are one-way travel. Uh, for the month of August, uh, both routes combined were down 2.9%. Um, the Vineyard was down 5.6%. Nantucket was down 2.1%. Uh, but year to date, we're up 1.1% combined or 771 uh, one-way uh, freight vehicles. Cars parked for the month of August, uh, both routes combined were down 8.8%, uh, with the Vineyard route being down 6.9% and the Nantucket route being down 18.1%. Year, year to date, we're pretty flat at 0.4% increase of 420 parked vehicles, um, with the Nantucket route being down 8.6% and the Vineyard route being up 2.3%. Trip summary for the month of August, um, we had combined for both routes, um, 
uh, no trips canceled for weather for the month of August, 12 for traffic, 194 for schedule changes, and 22 for crewing. Um, year to date, we have 300, excuse me, 143 trips canceled to mechanical, 322 for weather, 150 for traffic, 550 for the schedule modifications early in, earlier in the year, and 83 for crewing. And down below, you can see the year-to-date percentages for those categories in purple and the previous year below in green. Financial snapshot for the month of August, um, we have operating revenues of $19.9 million, which were down $524,000. Um, other income of $1.2 million, which was up $593,000. We had operating expenses of $11.6 million, which was up $211,000. Um, putting this all combined, we had a net operating income of $9.3 million, which was down $98,000, almost $99,000 compared to budget. Year to date, uh, we have an operating uh, net income of $12.7 million, which is $1.6 million ahead of budget so far. Here we can see reflective of the uh, past of the uh, traffic statistics. You can see the automobiles and the passenger numbers down for the month. Um, and that's really driving the uh, operating revenue being down for the month 2.6%. And again, we can see those categories on the year to date as well, driving that number down, uh, especially the automobile revenue. That's a combination of the uh, quantity of vehicles as well as the mix of the vehicles traveling. Operating expenses for the month um, were up 1.8% to $211,000. Um, some of the most of the maintenance expense was timing. Um, year to date, the fuel were down 1.3 million on uh, 15.9 million, uh, excuse me, 15.9%. Uh, we budgeted for $3 a gallon and we, um, excuse me, budgeted $3.37 a gallon. We came in at right around $3 a gallon for the year to date. So year to date, we're down about 1.7 million in operating expenses or 1.9%. Um, for the first two weeks in September, um, we're looking at on the vineyard route for pass for both routes uh, combined for passengers down just under 7,700 passengers at 4.9 percent, um, and that puts us year to date down 7,100 passengers at 0.3 percent. Total vehicles combined for the first two weeks of September were down 536 vehicles at 1.7 percent, um, and you can see in the vineyard route it's still the standard fares that are lagging behind. And same with the Nantucket route. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the uh, business summary for the month of August. <clears throat> A lot of information there, uh, folks. Any questions for Mark? All right. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, Mark. Is there any time? Is there any chance when you do these reports, at least when the Oak Bluffs is open, you can put in the number of diversions that we've had? It seems in September we've had quite a few diversions. Yes. My, um, yes, I will include that in the. Um, at the next um, port council, I'll give the year-to-date update on the diversions. My apologies, Joe. You did mention that to me, and I just got tied up with the budget. I forgot to put that I, in, so I apologize. I, that's okay. No, thank you. Uh, just a question. Maybe Bob can answer that. Who has the final determination on diversions? Is it the agent? Is it the captain? Does anybody from administration, such as the port captain or somebody in, in management, have any say in those matters? Because it just there seems to have been a lot in the month of September. It exactly. hasn't seemed to be that bad. Oh, it's a collaborative effort uh, um, in terms of uh, what's going on. So the, the vessels uh, will be in contact with the, the terminal agent to see what the conditions are at the, uh, in the slip. Uh, they'll also have the, you know, access to the, uh, what the forecasts uh, are. Um, and it also is dependent upon the vessels. Uh, I think you've been seeing a lot more diversions with the sanctity uh, these last mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Uh, because uh, as we pointed out before, that the, the sanctity doesn't sit as well in the slip because it's narrower than the other vessels. Um, it, it sits off the fendering system, so it, it becomes a little bit more susceptible to the the tidal conditions uh, when it's there. So that's why that's been divert that's been diverting a little bit more frequently than the others. As, as, as I say, the business community, I've had several more than several calls, uh, especially this month month of September. Usually once we hit September and October, we, we're, we're a little bit more susceptible to the, what, the weather conditions there and the diversion. So um, thank you. 
John? Uh, thanks, Rob. Um, yesterday, when they did the diversions, was that because of the sanctity or why? Uh, no, the, the issue yesterday was that the, uh, the governor, uh, having canceled trips earlier, uh, there was the trucks were in Vineyard Haven. And because of the weight, we needed to uh, divert to Sankey to be picking them up at Vineyard Haven as opposed to having those trucks go over the pier in, uh, in Oak Bluffs. So that, that was the primary reason uh, for the diversion of the Sankey yesterday. Okay, thank you. Although, just as another question, but that might be a good reason why to put things as we're going to discuss about communications, maybe putting something on Facebook or just letting people know because of the problems, this is why the boats were diverted. Thanks, Joe. I think, we're, I think we're, we're, we've been working on that, and I think we're, we're um, in some aspects, we're, we're going to be going back to old school. They, they sent a sign over so that way when there is diversions that they can put that up so that way people that are arriving know before they even get out of their vehicle that there is some diversions going on. Um, you know, we do have the, the text and the emails that go out regarding that, but obviously the more information we can get out, the better. Thank you. John? I don't want to let Mark Rosen get off the hook that easily. Going back to Mark for a minute. Hey, Mark, it, I know it's uh, September, well, now October 1st. Can you uh, forecast how the year will look at this point in time, or is it too early? Um, I want to see some of the September numbers, how the first, the diversions and some of the weather impacted us. Um, yeah. Still expect a net income. Um, one thing I'm waiting for that uh, last year gave us a uh, change to the positive is one of the actual reports or the pension reports. Yeah. Um, on the unfunded liability, because that could be a swing anywhere from two million plus or minus, uh, based on new actual reports and assumptions. Um, we just accelerated um, or attempted to accelerate a bunch of expenses from 25 to 24. And the big issue, especially now with the uh, longshoreman strike coming in, are those items actually got to hit the you know be received in 2024 to have the expenses. So right. next month I'll give a better forecast, but we still have some. Um, variables outstanding as well as some uh, contracts that are outstanding as well, trying to get those settled, um, which will have an impact on this year, potentially this year's budget as well. Um, so, but I appreciate you, you keeping me on the hook. All right, good. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, so Mark, maybe just a, a bit of a follow-up because I'm trying to get a sense of the big picture here and just how things look compared to uh, what you thought. And, you know, sort of, are there any messages about the state of the, you know, the economy, if you will, that we can connect with your performance? It seems like things are reasonably flat, uh, you know, uh, although we're a little bit to the positive on expenses. Um, but the, you know, look like, you know, plus or minus uh, tenths of a percent. Um, anything we can infer from that? So we're, you know, we're ahead of budget, as I mentioned, about $1.6 million right now. Um, we had a change on the Nantucket schedule where we're running the fifth trip, maintain the fifth trip with the IANA, as Nat mentioned, that's what we just talked in the agenda a couple items ago, and where we're not, we went to a double crew on the freight boat, so we're potentially losing some vehicle revenue there, so I want to see how that materializes, um, but looking at the previous 12 months, we're seeing, um, it'll come up in the budget, the uh, shifting of the travel patterns, you know, where it's uh, going to pre-COVID distributions of standard fares versus excursion fares, you know, looking at those, those issues as well. But overall, we're not too far off of budget projections when you look at the percentages. Yeah, that's where it, that's where it appeared. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I, I got to, I can't believe I'm going to question Mark's statement. Yikes. Um, Mark? We're not yeah. losing any vehicle revenue right now. We lost vehicle revenue this summer. Mm -hmm. That's. I just want to make sure that that that's understood. This summer is when we lost money because the toll wasn't on the Nantucket route. Right now, where everybody's winning right now on this little six week, whatever we're going to call it, this late summer, early fall. I don't know whatever it is, schedule. Um, because that 730 boat is packed at night. There is no other boat to come home except the Eagle. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, and then you got the other income issue, Mark, which I hate bringing up, but that's a fact. So 
I mean, we what got two saying, different times a year we're talking about here. So what I'm saying for the month of September and October, Nat, is last year we did run the fifth trip, and this year we are running the fifth trip as well. So those in and budgeted for the fifth trip because we actually used the September, October from 2022, and we were running the fifth trip with the IANO, where in the right. budget we scheduled the boat to be running three trips a day, seven days a week on your run, where it's going to be running seven days a week, two trips a day. And Saturday night, Sunday morning shouldn't have an impact. It's just a question it was everything absorbed compared to previous years in those 14 trips. And that's what I'm just waiting to yeah. see compared to the yeah, you're, you're going to see, you're not going to see. Yeah. You're going to see everything's getting here. Like that's just look at the woods hole numbers and you'll figure it out, you know, but anyway, okay. Sorry about all this. I'm just, Nope, that's why we're here. I, talk, I, I talk just about hate, I just, this stuff is so, it tying into the crew shortage stuff versus when we, you know, what we've had to do in the last two summers, it sort of gets bogged into the whole conversation and you have to, yeah, kind of separate it a little bit or else it gets more confusing, actually. So anyway, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, now, any yeah. other questions or comments on the business report, or can we move on to the uh, draft budget? I'm good. Okay, so let's move on to the draft budget. I think, you know, uh, it's obviously lots of uh, complicated information. Uh, we have a few things at the back end of the agenda that we'd like to preserve some time for. Uh, we would like to try to wrap up by 11. Um, it's uh, So to, to the extent we can kind of confine the presentation and the discussion. Uh, let's see see if we can't do that. Yep. So we made this presentation for those purposes. It's not a detailed as compared to the packet. It's really just a summary of what was in the packet. Um, so with me is Courtney Oliveira. She is the assistant treasurer, um, and she'll be taking the lead talking about the uh, preliminary budget right now. Okay, so we have the 2025 pr proposed operating budget. Um, for 2025, there's some operating budget assumptions, baseline for revenues of actual traffic statistics, August 2023 to July 2024, which is the most recent 12 months. Fuel costs, relatively flat compared to last year's budget. This year's budget, the 2024 budget, um, $3.15 per gallon in the 2025 budget versus $3.35 per gallon in the 2024 budget. Um, and we are fully hedged for 2025. Uh, operating budget is based on the 2024 approved operating schedule. Vessel crewing in 2025, we are focusing on increased training, recruitment, and retention. Um, the budget includes vessel crewing that keeps able-bodied seamen in the off-season, as we did in 2024. Keeping the extra ABs creates a feeder system for potential new licensed deck officers. Um, the MV Barnstable and MV Aquina are scheduled to operate in 2025. Because of these new vessels, we have increased insurance costs, increased fuel usage, and also a full year depreciation expense included in the budget. That brings us to our proposed operating budget bottom line. Operating revenues, $139.1 million. Um, operating expenses, $152.8 million. Other income, just over $12 million. Other expenses, um, almost 3.8 million for a net loss of 5.4 million. This slide is showing significant operating expense changes between the 2024 budget and the 2025 budget. Um, first, we have training, which is up almost 400, over $400,000 over last year's budget. We have payroll taxes up 630,000. Pension and relief and insurance, each up over 1.1 million in 2025. Uh, vessel maintenance, uh, up 1.2 million over last year's, uh, over the 2024 budget. Uh, we have more info on this on the slides to follow. Um, IT expense is expected to be almost 5.8 million in 2025 which is up over 3 million compared to the 2024 budget. Increases can be attributed to more cloud-based services and a security information and an event management system. The 
FIEM program will proactively find network problems and notify the department. This category also includes network and software costs related to the new reservation system. These costs are being evaluated as to whether they will be capital or not. Lastly, we have our biggest variance, which is payroll, um, up almost 7.7 .7 million. The increase includes board approved wage increases, settled contract agreements, and estimated estimates based on union negotiation. 2025 maintenance expenses <clears throat> include the dry docking of five vessels, the Martha's Vineyard, the Woods Hole, the Governor, the Sanctity, and the INO. Uh, total budgeted for these vessels is five over $5 million. Um, we are looking to accelerate the MV Governor dry dock into 2024. Terminal Dolphin and dock repairs, total budgeted for 2025 is just over $3 million. The biggest pro project being the slip work in Vineyard Haven. Talked about training in 2025, the training and staffing. Um, we have we have budgeted for uh, STCW training for vessel employees, vessel familiarization training, new vessel familiarization training, new pilot and captain training, yes. ad additional able-bodied seamen that I spoke about, um, cybersecurity and additional IT training and training and development expos that we have held twice twice in a year. Uh, now Mark is going to talk more about the 2025 operating revenues. So in addition to the uh, variances and the expenses uh, Courtney just highlighted, uh, we're looking at uh, projections using the last 12 months of uh, ridership. Uh, passenger revenue to be down about 845,000. Uh, parking revenue, revenue, uh, relatively flat, uh, freight revenue up about 2% or 825,000, and automobile revenue being down about 2.5 million or 3.6%. So here we can see the distribution between excursion fare vehicles and standard fare vehicles from 2019 to 2024. Uh, th these are January through August. We have a fair benchmark for each period. So pre-COVID in 2019, it was roughly a 65, 34, 35% split. Um, we can see during COVID that less people traveled from the, the Islanders didn't travel as much where it went to almost as high as 69, 31. And then now we can see current day, we're up to 39% of excursion rate travel and uh, standard fares is 61%. Um, and as we've talked about before, I think it was at the um, June May meeting with the cost of service, the uh, standard fare uh, vehicle co covers um, significantly more costs than the uh, stand, uh, excursion fare vehicles. And again, you can see the same trend with the uh, Nantucket run uh, on the distribution and the travel patterns where pre-COVID, uh, we we're roughly a 30, 70% split. And right now we're uh, 34, 66% uh, split. So putting the budget together, so the um, bars in the red and green show the monthly net income net loss per month and the blue is the aggregate total uh, for the whole year. So you can see we have a loss, operating loss for the first four months of the year, which aggregate total to about $20.7 million. Uh, we climb out of the hole and then we um, to an aggregate net income of 5.1 million and where without any rate adjustments, we'd come in at a net operating loss of $5.4 million next year. And for the sake, um, the sake of time, we'll just go right into the rate adjustments. And then I can, we can answer questions on both things since they're interrelated, if that's okay with the chair. That sounds fine. All right, so the rate adjustments, why are the rate adjustments needed? As we previously mentioned at um, prior meetings that some of these expenses we're forecasting 18 months in advance, such as dry docks for vessels that are in November of 2025, uh, construction contracts with uh, slip repairs in Vineyard Haven. Um, we have the maintenance costs for the um, vessel land side by increasing by 1.2 million. We have the employee wages and benefits uh, increasing by just under 8.8 .8 million. Uh, training costs increasing by 400,000. Uh, insurance costs with the new vessels and the, uh, as everyone sees it in the homes, uh, insurance is going up for about 1.2 million, but about 600,000 of that will be a one-time cost uh, associated with the construction of the Monomoy. 
Um, and then IT costs, uh, we're making investments to improve the overall experience and that'll be about $3 million. Um, so all of these costs are targeted at increase, uh, improving the uh, overall customer experience with the vessels, uh, investing in our employees, investing in our maintenance, investing in our IT, investing in the training. So we look at these as not really as expenses, but more of investments in improving ourselves. So here's a graph showing the um, maintenance expenses from the uh, last five years and shows that we are reinvesting into our, our facilities and our vessels. Here's the budgeted IT expense. And part of the significant uh, expense, as Courtney mentioned, uh, increase this year is looking at the uh, integration from the old system to the new system, making sure we have networks that work, making sure that we have integration costs that are gonna be outside of the uh, reservation system that we're gonna have to work with other vendors to, uh, to improve on that. Courtney mentioned some of the uh, technology advance for making, and also there's costs associated with uh, the support systems with the, with the um, as we transition to more software as a service programs. Here's the training expenses, and here we can see the uh, trend. We're, we're investing more in our employees, um, getting them more trained. This also includes uh, vessel familiarization with the new vessels, um, getting more more uh, seamen to be able body seamen, keeping them on the boats longer. Um, we did that this year. We're going to continue to do that last year. The AVs are a feeder system for the licensed deck officers. AVs become pilots. Pilots become captains. Uh, the feeder system we've had in the past has worked well, really investing to get that going again. So the bottom line on the, uh, so we have a net loss of um, $5.5 million. Um, we're looking for a targeted net income of about $10.8 million. Our bond ser service next year is just under 10.88 million for the principal. Um, so putting this together requires a additional revenue of 16.3 million. Um, 10.2 would come from the vineyard route and 6.1 would come from the Nantucket route. And that's really related to the uh, allocation of the cost and the cost of service model we went over a couple months ago. This is showing the distribution by uh, three major vehicle types of how much deck space they use compared to the revenue. So you can see in 2023, so for instance, on the excursion fares on the Nantucket route, the excursion fare vehicles account for 5.7% of the revenue, but they use 15% of the space. On the vineyard route, it's 9.6% of the revenue and 28.8% of the space. Um, for the standard fare vehicles on the vineyard route, they account for 60.8% uh, of the revenue and 44.2% for of the space. And the freight on the Nantucket route, um, you know, you can see the distribution there. And here's the cost of basically summing this up, what each type of vehicle pairs is, uh, pays as compared to what it costs us to transport their, uh, these types of vehicles on the deck spaces across to each run. So this is a summary of the proposed rate adjustments, um, looking at adjusting the passenger fares by 2.7 million, excursion fares for a million, uh, standard fares by just over 6.1 million, freight vehicles by 4.6 million, uh, parking and miscellaneous fees. So in the vineyard route, in, not in, the, in your packet, there's a detail um, for each category, but in the off season, we're looking at rates adjusting anywhere from $6 to $11 for the uh, standard fare vehicles um, in the shoulder season that we're in right now by $21 to put it more in par with what the rates were in May. Um, looking at the uh, Monday through Thursday in the summer going up 11 and the peak pricing Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the summer going up $25. This combined will bring an additional $4.4 million in revenue. Um, the auto coupon books would go up about $100. Um, excursion fares in the off season would go up $3.50 each way. And in the summer season, $5. Um, freight would have a 10% increase. Uh, the passengers, the adults would go up $1 each way, and the corresponding children and seniors would be adjusted accordingly down below. Um, daily fee parking in the off season, looking at four to five dollars per day. Um, in the summer season, we'd adjust. Right now, we have a two tiered system a Monday through Friday and a Saturday, Sunday rate would make it all to the same rate at $23 a day. Um, and then we have parking permits for Woods Hole to be adjusted by $200 and Palmer by $100. On the Nantucket route, 
Um, the standard fare vehicles would be adjusted by 18 to $25 in the off season. Um, in the shoulder season, in the summer season, both the Monday through Friday and the weekends by $30. And then again, in the shoulder season from 9.15 to 10.31 to $45. And that'll put it on par for what those May rates are. Um, coupon books would be going up about $144. Um, excursion fares would be adjusted by $9 in the off season, 12 in the peak season. Um, freight on the Nantucket route going up 12%, a little different than on the vineyard route, where the vineyard route, the freight covers closer to 100% of their cost, while on the Nantucket route, it's about 85% of the cost they cover. So that's a little higher percentage than on the vineyard route. Um, one way adult on the uh, fast fare would be going up $4 one way, children $2. Um, and other corresponding fares could be seen there and the same day round trip going $3, up $3. Um, no adjustments for the conventional ferry on the Nantucket run. That would stay the same. We're not recommending any increases on the conventional ferry or the daily fee parkings on the Nantucket run at this time. Uh, parking permits for both types of parking would go up $200 annually. Um, driver services for the commercial vehicles would go up 10, would be proposed to go up $10 on a year round basis. And for the passenger vehicles, only during the summer months, a $25 increase per drive on. Uh, barges would be going up $1 at a time. Um, there's a graph in your packet just showing the distribution where for the standard fare vehicles, um, where in the big blue areas, you can see it's the summer months that's uh, really taking the, uh, the most of the revenue adjustments. And here's the distribution by category, what each care category is. Uh, recommend as it being proposed for, as far as percentage of the overall uh, rate adjustment. And here's the graph after with the proposed rate adjustments. And here we can see we, um, I got to grab my notes here. Um, we bought, we lose much, still lose money in the first four months of the year, but it's only, it's down to 17.7 .7 million. Then we uh, peak at a net, net income of 18.4 million in September and October. And then we finish the year at 10.8 million. Um, so it's a lot, as um, Mr. Muner said, in a small window. Um, there's more detail included in the packet, but it'd be Courtney or I would be happy to answer any questions anyone has or any recommendations. Um, also, as a side note, we'll be uh, proposing this um, as how the budget uh, process will work. We'll be going over these same information with the board um, in a couple of weeks. Then the week of the 21st, we're going to have three budget workshops in person, one on the vineyard, one in Nantucket, and one on the mainland to go over um, working groups to answer questions and details and take suggestions on how this all works. Both does the process, how we put the budget together and also the assumptions we made and why we're doing what we're doing. Thanks, Mark. When are you looking for a vote? Not till next month's meeting. This is just uh, yeah. preliminary giving an overview because there's a lot of information. And yeah. we will be making some tweaks in the meantime. For instance, the schedule change that Nan, uh, that just got mentioned today by the Port Council, we'll be looking at that. We'll also be looking at the traffic uh, in August and seeing if that how that impacts the budget, as well as a couple of the accelerated items we're looking, um, as well as working with Tom Gibbons and Stephen Coleman on the IT project to get a uh, clearer picture on some of these IT expenses. There's a lot here. Yeah. Is, is there anything about not having it approved or voted on next month? Is that possible? So, so the issue you have, if it gets delayed to December, is putting the pricing in place for when you have all the reservations that are going to be made for the first quarter and the summer reservations coming in. So we really need to put this in place prior to that. Mm -hmm. um, we've had rate adjustments or mid-rate where you're changing the rates when people get billed out. And frankly, it stinks. You better just getting it do it right the first time instead of having add-ons. That's my personal opinion, but uh, that's uh, the for the port council and the board. But that's my recommendation: is you get it in time, you get it right, and you uh, work with okay. it. I, I think we all agree conceptually, but I also think there's an awful lot here that is going to take some serious uh, uh, attention to have this done in a month. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's open it up for uh, questions and comments from uh, members of the port council. Nat? Yep, might as well go first. Mark, cool. quick, quick question. How does this, you know, I don't actually know the answer to this, and I should. 20 feet, and that whole 20 feet thing, which drives me nuts. Okay. Can, isn't, don't we have a system in place where you, like with the pickup trucks that are over 20, they get an excursion still? 
Yeah, there's an exception. So when we talk about that exception, example, thing. So if you had a, for instance, F-350 dually with an extended cap, yeah. I mean, whatever, for yeah. personal vehicles, that would be in that, that those are included in the excursion rate fares. Okay. So to take an outlier, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking general yeah. budget for terms. Yeah, because I, I just want to make sure that that is in because I would suggest just starting at 25 feet, but that's okay. As long as there is a separation for the vehicles that are a tweak over 19 feet, 11 inches. That's what I'm trying to say. We're not, if you qualify for that program now, you're still going to qualify going forward. We're not making any suggested changes now. Okay. All right. That's first thing. Second thing is the excursion. Okay. The thing about your idea about the fast boat, I think we should talk about that. Not necessarily right this second, but that is a great, we got to give back something. I know the vineyard has a different way to do whatever they do. We have a thousand different scenarios over here. People have to send their car. It sits in Hyannis. It's very inconvenient when you have to do things like that, but that's part of living here. And that's true. But when we have these increases, we want to try to give back on the other end somehow. I still feel that the timing of the excursion could be extended a little bit on each end a little. And then also, um, oh, I had one more and I didn't write it down and now I can't remember what it is, but I'm now, sorry. But, and, and that, but okay. If you notice, we're very cognizant of those items that you brought up and the driver services, it's only from May to September. No. I know. So I'm, I'm talking about that, other, that framework. To I'm talking about that whole upgrade. Okay, now I know what I wanted to say. The upgrade ticket thing, fixing that, because no people don't even know about that. And I just had that proven to me by somebody just now. Um, my phone's kind of blown up, just so you guys know on all this. People are reading this stuff, and they kind of know about it. And the other thing is the slow, fast ticket. Getting that fixed so that they can book it people will use that mark if they knew it existed but people don't even know there's a whole new cycle of people working here now that don't know about these things and there's a new cycle of passengers and residents that don't know some of these little things that we did 15 years ago right you know what i mean i'm not trying to like i'm just trying to I, I, this is outside of this rate increase stuff, but it isn't because it's a give back. So it's on the other end that makes it work. And the other thing with not raising the slow boat ticket, I want to add one more thing to that. It's really important for everyone here that has no clue what I'm talking about. Those new boats not having the weight limit draft thing is going to change the numbers of passengers going on the slow boat on the Nantucket route, big time. We don't know what it's gonna be yet, but it's going to change because there are gonna be people going on that 6.30 a.m. Aquina or whatever boat is running on that trip. All those ones that would have been, oh, you can't go on this boat, like the 10.45 um, freight boat that's heavy, loaded with heavy trucks now all of a sudden could have 50 people on it that never were on that boat before that's going to change things mark okay because that doesn't it doesn't mean that they were going on the fast boat just because they couldn't go on that boat you know what i'm saying we, they're going on the high line of the waiting for the next you know whatever they're doing you know what i mean so it's going to change things a lot um but i just think we should look at some of those give back things the the upgrade the slow, fast combi ticket, booking that fast leg of it, and the um, extending the excursion in the off season, a couple weeks in the spring or whatever before Memorial Day, maybe add a week, and then the Wednesday of the following week of Labor Day. See, I've adjusted my request. It used to be the the Wednesday after Labor Day, but now I've added a week <laughs> because this year it started on Sunday. Like that's, I mean, uh, okay. Thank you, Mark, very much. So now we'll touch base on the uh, upgrade and the soul fast combo, these mission driven um, type items that you're bringing up and seeing what we can do to help uh, the uh, 
island resident experience. They're family friendly things, Mark. And that's what we need to be. We can't forget those things. That stuff matters. Thank you. We'll look at that and bring that up at next month's meeting. Yep. Thank you. Joe. Rob, is there any chance that we could have a special meeting just on the budget before our meeting in November? Because there's a lot to comprehend here. And I know some people have to leave at 11 o'clock. I, I think that's possible. Um, I think this is complicated. I think given the timeline that uh, Mark outlined, uh, it's almost inevitable. <laughs> but uh, let's let's see what uh, other comments uh, quickly. Um, Rob, uh, John. Well, just real quick, I'm building on Joe's comment. Another alternative would be, you know, for the chair to say, look, at you guys, all meeting all of us should work with Mark over the next two to three weeks to understand the budget. I know Mark has always made his time available to us, that might help. Uh, I know I would like to call Mark. I got a couple of questions and maybe encourage the rest of us to do so. Yeah, well, I think we're, we're all here right now and I, I'd like to make sure that we ask what we can ask right now or, or comment, um, recognizing think, this is quite complex. Yeah, I'm also like sensitive to that 11 o'clock hard stop. Yep. Um, I have probably 20 minutes worth of questions right now. Yep. Just Mr. Dewick, he's got a question in the room. He's just, you can't see him. Eric, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Mark, you know, I, I, I like what I see, quite honestly. I think you're you're on track. Um, the one delta that I saw was parking. Okay. And in, in line with what Nat is talking about, in, in order to offset some of these excursion opportunities, can you increase the parking rates? You know, the parking rates, you know, when you're looking at you know, Falmouth alone compared to what you would pay for a day rate in Boston, it, there, there's a 10 to $20 delta there. Um, I, I don't know the high NS rates exactly, but I would like to see you increase parking rates, um, not considerably, but reasonably in order for those offsets to occur, occur you know, focusing on the, the mission-driven initiative here. And I, I think it would be smart I don't think it hurts anybody because those are the people that can afford to to pay those increased rates versus the, the onboard tickets. So we'll, we'll look at, um, so right now we're proposing the Falmouth parking to go to 23. We can look at what the impacts are going to 25 would be, and then also look at the highest parking on the daily fees um, in the summer and then see if there's items that we could give back to your point and that point, Nat's point. But like one thing that comes to top of my mind is the medical rates, for example. Yeah. Can we not increase the medical rates where those are people who have to travel, not by choice, but necessity, um, things of that nature. Yeah, I think, I think if you focus on mission, mm -hmm. you know, and deliver on mission, the, these are the ways to do that. Yeah. And then suggestion to Mr. Kale's point, I can make, uh, uh, reach out to each port council meeting and have member and have a follow up and go over lockout times, come in person and go over all these uh, line items one by one and go over it prior to next meeting. Real quick, just as a reminder, I, I think you need to do that one on one and not yes. with in with any multiples. Of, From a sunshine. Uh, I I guess my question I have a question is that is can we get fifteen minutes out of everybody additional fifteen minutes right now to try? Yes. That, yes. It might make the bet. I mean, I'll. I'll ch try to change my obligation here. And uh, I, I think we're here. And if we can at least get to a point where we kind of uh, constrain, um, is that okay? Can everybody okay else give it? me, Mark? I mean, Rob. Pardon me? That's okay with me, Rob. Yeah. Okay, great. Other comments, questions? I guess I'll chime in. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not quite ready where Eric is. Um, I, I'm not ready to be talking about the rate adjustments until I'm really uh, comfortable with the numbers. Um, you know, I, I think the expenses increase is extraordinary. Uh, I need to be sure I totally understand that. Um, I don't know that we've ever had a $15 million expense increase in a, in a given year. Uh, it'd be interesting to know how this is contextually. Um, and I don't know what our current burn rate is, but uh, you know, does our do our costs suddenly go up January first? It it because uh, we're nowhere close to the numbers that are being presented for twenty twenty five in twenty twenty four. 
Um, so I guess uh, those those are the things I need to feel comfortable with. And if I can, I'll tackle some of it in a high level. This is the largest rate increase. Let's come out and say it. Um, let's just rip the bandage right off and talk about it. Um, and the biggest driver on the expense side is the um, um, payroll expense that we're talking about. You know, we're looking at the payroll expenses by keeping extra ABs on the boats, training them, for example, to become pilots and captains. That's a real cost. Um, off the top of my head, I think it's half a million. I'm not going to, I'm just guessing that I can get a firm number on that. We're looking at wage increases that um, you're probably looking, you know, that some of the contract, the first contract we settled, you're looking at a 10% wage increase in year one. Um, so, you know, you put that, you factor that into other agreements that, you know, you're looking at a temp, that's $5 million right there alone without any additional um, uh, payroll numbers, roughly $50 million. So doing quick math, you're at 5 million there before talking additional ABs, training expenses, taking people, um, pay, paying them to get trained to learn these systems. Um, you're looking at the IT where a lot of these um, positions where they were um, on the lower end of the scale as far as technical skills, putting in data uh, management people, um, database management people, programmers, higher skilled levels, well, even though the hours aren't going up, the skill level is going up. And all of these expenses, you look at the big things that we're talking is maintenance, um, you're looking at uh, IT, and you're looking at payroll expenses. These are all investments trying to improve the operations. That's the goal of these items. Um, yeah, but I, that in I, I think we understand that. I guess one of the things that the, the underlying question I have is, you know, at some point when you raise prices, you actually don't generate more revenue because it's not elastic. People, you know, stop, you know, changing their behaviors. And, and you don't want to find ourselves where we're raising rates so much that we actually don't generate the revenue. And I don't know if we've done that analysis enough to have a sense of, of, of that because we're just making what appears sort of the assumption that you raise the rates, you're still going to have the same behaviors. Uh, and that just may not be the case. Mm. John? I, may, Rob, I, I, saw, um, I saw John first. All right. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. You know, I was going to wait to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, Mark, about this, but have you ever looked at where the market is, seems to be going in a number of industries where you have prepay and you also have... Um, stronger cancellations uh, fees that are actually, you know, applied. You know, I noticed from we hear from those on the street that there's a number of cancellations which are coming from some of the bigger organizations that do bulk uh, traffic. And if we impose cancellation fees and we imposed um, also the uh, prepayment, is there another way to manage the revenue if not increase it? Sure. So to answer that, we do have, uh, for lack of a better term, a prepay is when we look at everyone who's booking their reservations in January for May, October, um, you know, excuse me, May, June, July, and August, where those are really pre so they're paying for the reservation when they make it in January and February for the summer months. Um, the shippers, they pay 10% deposit, yeah. uh, but then they get charged out when they get charged. We do have <sighs> cancellation revenue where if the reservation isn't canceled in time, um, it's the cost of the reservation. You can use it later on, but the penalty is the uh, full fare of the ticket. So to answer your yeah. question, we have those items in place already it, uh, to promote good behavior, for lack of a better term, on the cancellation side. Uh, Rob, yes, can I? Uh, yep. Sorry, I don't mean to, oh, this topic right here needs to happen at the workshop thing whenever that is going to be i forgot the date um rob's on to something mark we've discussed for at least 10 years me and you this is a complex complex conversation i'm going to throw in this for you guys on the vineyard your cars are already parking over there year round now ours have been doing it you're seeing the numbers mark has all these numbers the one-way car is no longer lined up at the boat like they were 15 years ago. They're they're still at the boat, but they're nowhere near the full number of vehicles coming there on the boat that they used to be. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough boats. You'd be running 24-hour service to get these cars. They're already parked in garages right now. They just get started up, and we start complaining the second they pull them out of their garages. 
but they're already here. They came on the boat once. So we're squeezing money out of the same stuff, Rob, to give you the fast non-college graduate answer. So that is exactly what's happening. We're squeezing money out of what has no choice but to come here. And all the other income that Mark's talking about is something that, you know, when you guys got appointed on the vineyard, you guys, when you first started, I talked about that. In fact, one of you brought it up to me and said, what does it mean? And I didn't even want to give you the answer. So it's, it's, but that's important as far as what understanding that. About? Yeah. I remember when you asked me that you, one yeah, of you did. But, but remind me what was the question? Never good. I'm not talking about that right now. So <laughs> it's, but it's all part of this system. And I'm glad that Eric brought up the parking because we talked about that when we talked to Mark and Bob, the parking rates are low. But here's the other thing that's going to happen to us as, as, as members. People are going to be complaining about the service for the price. In other words, are we going to get improved service if we pay more? I already have messages in my phone in the last hour about that. And that's something that we have to be cognizant of with the employees, with the system. It's very difficult for us to just suddenly be different just because it's costing more that's that's an, a huge problem that we're going to be facing in the in this decade and 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 further because people expect more better service or better you know just overall like treatment i don't know experience whatever you want to call it right and I, and that's just it, we need to try to fix that but it's going to take time Thanks for those comments, Nat. Uh, Eric, okay. do you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, the reality of where we are today, you know, as, as kind of a, a global economy is prices are increasing dramatically in, in every corner that you look. Um, when you're looking at health care and you're looking at, at salaries, salaries you know, are almost doubling uh, across the board in almost every industry. So I, I think... You know, when when you're looking at this from a pragmatic standpoint, it, it is not only how do you meet your budgetary needs, but how do you, in fact, meet the, the mission driven service? And, and I think, you know, there's some of the problems that this organization has been realizing over the past few years is maybe as a result and factor of not having enough pennies invested in certain areas. And, and, you know, I've been here only a short time, but, you know, I am third generation uh, knowledgeable about this organization. Um, I, I, I was born into this company. I, my father used to sit me on the on the chair in the uh, in the engine room on the Nobska to babysit me. The Nobska's, you know, engines would put me to sleep and I wouldn't get in any trouble. So I know this organization. In the that sounds like why our insurance rates are going up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh well, we didn't have those rules back then. No, but yeah. but at the end of the day, we we really have to look at providing better service. And I think everything that this team has put together in terms of investment looks like it's going to pay off in the end. And and this is a guy that, you know, looks at it as a generalist from every angle. Um and I, you know, in looking at the budget, I am a budget wonk. I am a policy nerd. Um, I, I was, I was blown away, you know. And, and the literally the only question I had on on earning opportunities was the parking, you know. But there may be other places. I love listening to Nat in in Nat's uh, industrial knowledge because Nat gets it. Nat, out of, out of all of us, you know. You say you're not the college kid, but I'm going to tell you, you're teaching us more than we're teaching anybody. So thank you. Um, it's it's really important that you impart that industrial knowledge so we understand how to move forward. Thanks for that, Eric. I'm not there yet, but I, I could get there. <laughs> uh, any other comments? I, I guess we have to figure out, oh, Gordon? Well, just to say, first of all, Chairman, thank you for for your first question, because that was the new guy going, my head was spinning, right? So I'm like, is, are we, are we going to have this conversation next year with these numbers? I, they, it was just sort of- um, Good question. Uh, 
uh, eye popping for me, right? So I'm glad I wasn't an outlier on that. But I, I will also say Mark's response to you explaining how the investments in personnel, right? Because that's the that has revealed itself as a significant failure point, right? This this season and the idea that uh, that we're investing in the staff and in the personnel for that reliability and all of those other things. There's a lot of messaging that's going to go along with why we're doing this and uh, how we're spending the money and um, and that we're not doing this lightly by any stretch uh, if we end up doing it, but uh, we're doing it for the service. Although I got to get my head around the very question of who's actually paying, right? And is this the people that are fully dependent, I think, as you said, um, uh, on the service versus the discretionary dollar, right? Which, um, so anyway, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll stop, but uh, agree that there's kind of more conversation to be had. So how do we uh, like to proceed here? Um, I, I think there was a suggestion that we have some individual conversation. Yes. Um, and, and maybe that makes sense. I think it could be that we uh, do that and then sort of see how things land uh, for next next month. Uh, but if there was some outlying kind of information that warranted some other action, I suppose we could consider that. Um, yeah. What are, what are people's thoughts? I, I would love I to agree. see uh, Mark visit with each one of you individually and myself. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And, I mean, and Mark, John and I, if that's agreeable, we could meet with you together. Whatever you choose. Yeah. And, okay. It sounds like a, a way forward. Yep. Um, and, and then we'll be as informed as we possibly can be for next month. And obviously we'll have the benefit of uh, the board's discussion on this topic as well. I'll send out invites, uh, Mr. Chair, um, for availability. Okay, great. Individually. Thanks, Mark. And thanks for your work on this. We all, we, we all obviously very much appreciate it. John, Joe, you have an, uh, you have an item under old, old, or old slash new business. Uh, probably don't have enough time to really give it justice. Yeah. I know. I, I guess, what, I guess we don't. But my why don't you introduce it? And then we can at least agree uh, how we want to handle. Yeah, this, this was on, this was on communications. Uh, and that's been the big problem over here. Uh, just very, very briefly, uh, there was something that was on Islanders talk last uh, Thursday when the Nantucket didn't run. And it's a person that I happen to know who came down to the boat at a quarter of eight and found out it wasn't running, even though she checked online before she left her house. At 12 past eight, she got a text saying that the 815 boat wasn't running. Why wasn't that text out sent earlier? I got the same text at, eight, at 812. This should be better communications. And that just proves the point where she had made reservations at a uh, veterinary clinic to have her dog serviced. She sure. then went in standby, waited for two hours and said, I've had enough of this and went home. And there was like, at that point in time, when I printed this out, there were 57 comments. How many people do work in communications, uh, Sean? Uh, I have myself and two uh, marketing and creative specialists. Is there any way that one of them could be put on each day when there's a problem to make sure that these notifications get sent out earlier? Well, part of the issue is that we can't, we, my department doesn't do the cancellation of the trips. Those cancellations right. are generated at the terminals. And well, I understand that, but can't they get it to you so then you can put it out to the public? I mean, there should be some communication system that, that you know. I guess I'm not sure beyond, I mean, the, the, can, the, the text and the email cancellations is the communication system. So if there's a systematic problem where we know there's going to be an issue for multiple trips, then I, I put an alert out on the website and often will mirror that on social media. If it's a one or a two trip incident, usually by the time it's that would happen, the issue has been resolved. So, you know, the, and Mark can speak more to the timing of the uh, cancellations, but very often they don't happen until right before the trip is scheduled. So we, we don't know in advance that the boat is going to have a mechanical problem. So, you know, the, the issue of more notice we give, I think as much notice as we're able to, because we're we're trying to get that trip running as until the last possible minute. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. we knew this that the boat never left Woods Hole to to get to the vineyard for the seven o'clock uh, for the six o'clock trip. So we knew it wasn't going to make the quarter past eight trip. I mean that was obvious, but and it should have been put out at seven o'clock, not at twelve past eight. John, I mean, not, not, sorry. Uh, Go ahead, thank Rob. You. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think if we could take a step back here. Um, I believe Mr. Salito's original request was to have a 
uh, sharing of the budget for marketing communications in totality by line item so that we understood what was being spent for marketing communications, which entails not only advertising, but communicating with the general public. And that's really what the issue is here. So what we'd like to go back to is our original request is, what was the budget for last year? What was it spent on? And then we can talk about how we want to spend that money going forward in Mark's new budget. Um, we've been at this for a long time, and it seems like the same problems keep, keep uh, cropping up is people have a lack of understanding of what's going on, and that's just not acceptable. So I would like to see, and maybe you can email it to us beforehand so we can be prepared to talk about it as a group, a detail as to what is spent in the marketing communications area before our next meeting. That would actually be the advertising budget, but yes, I will send that to you before the next meeting. It might I be a budget, apologize. but I think you also have to spend you know, some time working with some other people in the department is how much time or money or resources people is actually spent communicating with the the traveling public, you know, when they're on the road, not as opposed to- right. I mean, that, that's not gonna show up as a, as a budget line item. It's a resource allocation with people we have, but I, I can work on, work something up for you on that. And it involves multiple departments. It's not, mostly not my department, uh, the things that we're talking about, but, and Eric had his hand up as well, Rob. Go well, ahead, Eric. Before we move off, you know, Sean, I think you know in general what we're asking because we've asked it several times. And if you want, I can talk to you offline a little bit more, but we're not doing a good job. And I think it's just been so long that we've been asking for these things that in order for us to help you and advise you as the dollar spent per dollar on each, you know, occurrence, it would be helpful to have a detailed understanding. And, and thank you very much, Rob. Eric? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, you know, I, I think what is being asked is is certainly fair and reasonable, uh, Sean. I think, do you have a working group uh, put together for people to help advise you and, and really start to construct a, a communications plan? It, it's been led by Allison Fletcher because most of the functions that we have been talking about come under shoreside operations. Okay. But yes, there is... Allison has been leading that effort as of late. And, and are any of these board members on that? No, it's a staff committee. Okay, I, I, I suggest having some external participation um, just for expertise purposes. Uh, if, if Mr. Chair, if that's something you, you could help facilitate, um, you know, the, the both members from the vineyard have good cogent points and I think they wanna be helpful. They don't wanna, I didn't get the sense they want to attack you. Uh, no, I'm not, and I'm not taking that as that at all. It, it, it might be a good time to uh, maybe for us to figure out how we help Sean a little bit better here. Yes, Joe. Yeah, I want to apologize for my. I guess my frustrations because this past week I've had a lot of people stop me on the street that have been very concerned about not knowing what's what's been happening. And I know Sean has always been very helpful, and so was in Allison. Uh, we talk quite quite frequently, and I know they're trying to rectify the situation. But that's the one of the biggest complaints that we have here on the vineyard is communication. In fact, uh, uh, Sean and I and Bob had a meeting on on uh, Thursday. We brought up. Many years ago, they used to have a chalkboard out in front of the Oak Bluffs dock, and they'd write on there what time the boat was coming, or the boat was late, or the boat was being canceled, or you're going to have to go to Vineyard Haven uh, to get the next boat. And that was just with the chalkboard. And right now, we don't have any of that. And that saved a lot of the agents problems in having to try to do their work and then answer questions about why the boat wasn't running. But again, I, I, I didn't mean to. I'm just venting a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Matt, you have something? No, I'm on? good. I Okay. It's, it, I mean, this, I think they know what's going on with this. This is, there's more than this conversation. And a lot of it is you don't find out the captain makes the ultimate decision and it goes through the poor captain. They have messaging and then it goes, it's, it isn't just like planned like a two hours in advance. That's where the problem comes in. But I do like one of my things to add to this topic is texting like the airlines. Texting is better than an email. And I hope with all this money we're spending with IT and these different people who I've completely lost track of who's doing what, but it doesn't matter, is texting has to be at the front of the 
ability to just send instant messaging somehow. I just don't know exactly how that can happen, but that is important. And I would say, including the high line into it for us somehow, but I don't know if that'll ever happen, but some way to have a, a, a solid communication because last weekend I had, I was asked more times what boats are and aren't running. Like I'm supposed to know every single boat, like my, in my head, but like, that's what happens because people are scrambling to figure out who's running. Well, you got to get vessel finder first on our route because you can figure it out by looking at vessel finder. But anyway, Thank you for your efforts, Sean, on this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so how do we want to leave this topic? I mean, it seems like uh, we have a reasonable definition of what we think the issues are from the perspective of, of the Port Council. Um, and I, I think it's a topic to bring up next time, but maybe with uh, Sean, you or whomever armed with uh, some of your thoughts on this, it does seem like there's uh, multiple departments involved and, you know, maybe there's a structural element to this. Maybe there's a process element to this. Maybe there's a technology element. You know, there's a whole host of things that maybe contribute to this or that are, would be ways we might help to, you know, improve this. Um, so how do we move this to, uh, you know, I think I, I have a, a, a sense. I have a strong sense of what is needed, and certainly, if anyone has anything specific they want to hear about, they can reach out to me. But I, I have a, I have, I have a charge for next month, so I'm comfortable if you are. Before, okay. before ahead, next, chairman. The next week. Yes, John, go ahead. What would be that charge? I mean, could we just get a, a agenda item that we can all agree on? That seems to be part of the difficulties here. Well, I, if I if I may, so I think part of, part of this is that um, I think what I'm hearing is that you'd like to see what's go, what what we're spending the money on and what the efforts are. But I think there's a bit the bigger picture, as Rob pointed out, that it, it involves a departmental, um, you know, um, as well as structural in terms of uh, our IT and things like that. So I think we can put something together and um, ha have some discussions about that uh, with you uh, and see if that's the direct, once we have something, if that's the direction of uh, where you would like the conversation to uh, to go at next month's meeting. Okay, I mean, it seems like there's, you know, the potential for, you know, uh, action plans that are sort of near term and longer term. Near term meaning, what can we do now yeah. to help improve the situation? Longer term, what, what can we do to say, incorporate into our, uh, technology upgrades that would provide us, you know, the, the ultimate outcome, a better system altogether. But uh, I think there's a, a pretty urgent need to address this urgently um, <laughs> with what, with what, you know, we, we have at hand. And thank you. Don't mind, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, sir. Closing comment would be that uh, for, for Eric and, and Gordon, uh, I know Joe and I have been on this topic for at least two years trying to get to some better place. And it's very frustrating when um, you walk down the streets of Martha's Vineyard and everybody stops and says to you, what's going on? Mm. Uh, if we don't have a good communications plan where we're reaching the traveler. We don't have a good communications when we're not reaching the Islanders. Um, so whatever it takes, I'll let you guys solve that out internally. But right now it's embarrassing to get that we're not making improvements from two years ago when we address this face-to-face -face in a private meeting. Thanks, John. I think that's, yeah. it's pretty clear. I, I don't think it, you know, we have to take any specific action other than you've just heard all of the, the, the exhortation from our, our, our members. Um, so let's uh, have this as a topic next month. Obviously that means it's going to compete with the budget, which is going to be another big topic. So maybe we have to think about some of the other elements on the, uh, agenda so that we have time to hit the most important uh, topics. Uh, Mr. Jones is here in the room and uh, is, I see there, Peter at least, is there any other board members on? Uh, we don't no, want to have any no, open meeting issues. Doesn't look like it, so do you want it? Can we go to public comment quickly uh, or Mr. Chair, if, if we still on a quorum, if I leave, because I have to leave, like as much as I don't want to. Is that okay? Oh, I think so. Yeah, we still have a Okay. Yep. I'm wicked sorry. Oh. Don't mind. 
It's okay, man. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, yeah. thank you guys Thanks, so much. Thanks, thank you, staff. Yeah. Appreciate Very your contributions, Matt. Take care. Hey, Annette. I just wanted to steal two minutes here. I have more to do, but uh, be in the time and things like that. I want to bring you up, up to date here. Uh, we all know uh, at the last meeting of the board, uh, Bob put in his resignation. I was going to talk a little bit about that and read a letter that I sent to our board. But aside from that, that we're, we're moving forward, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to appoint a, a, a committee of, of six uh, to go over uh, job descriptions of the new general manager. That's one thing. Num number two, that we at our uh, next meeting of the board, we will go into executive session and talk with Bob uh, about his job description and you know how that's going to fit. That may take you know one meeting. It may take two minutes. But the, the bottom line is we are moving forward on this position here. I will. Uh, I will send you uh, a, a letter that I sent to the town of Barnstable explaining, uh, you know, what happened and things. And I know there's, there's people don't know how Bob's contract works and things like that. But in any event, it's just, it's just more of a informative. Uh, there's a lot to, to talk about when, when you're trying to digest years of evolution on the, the budget and, and things and with all the different programs that uh, happen a preferred phase and you know everything else that's got to be incorporated all i can say is good luck i've been on the board between the port council and and now the board for 23 years and i can tell you it is not easy so you, i understand your frustration every time we have uh, meetings like this uh, to discuss the budget, there's a lot of parts and pieces in it, and and I think getting together with Mark will will uh, will certainly help. But it's it, it's it's a long process, and I've never seen such an increase. You know, this is uh, I'd be careful, Mark. I think your your face is going to be on the post office wall. I'm not sure. So in any event, it, 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 it's beyond belief, but here we are, you know, it's, it's 2024 and going on 25. So that's all I have to say. So thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, question, you, Bob. if you're going to form a committee, I assume it's somewhat like a search committee, would you want representation from the Port Council? Well, I can tell you right now who the committee is. Oh, uh, 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 from the port council, it'll, it'll be uh, Rob and Nat. No, 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 no. Huh? I think that has to take place at the board meeting. Yeah, they do that at the board meeting. I'm making an appointment for a committee. Yeah, I think you because we'll find out. Yeah, I wasn't putting you on the spot. I was just wondering what the process would be. And obviously, I would argue that we want to have representation from the Port Council. Well, the, we look forward to hearing. Yes. We don't need to know that right this second. No. The appointment will be made uh, by myself as chairman, uh, unless uh, somebody challenges the chair, which I can say good luck. And, uh, <laughs> and we have some very good people on there. Uh, and that'll be, you know, one people, the board themselves will go over uh, Bob's contract as the hiring authority. And it, this is going to take just a, a little bit of a challenge. And, and it, there's a new position and how it fits with everything. It, it's it's going to be open for discussion. But I think we're moving the right direction. So other than that, all I can say is good luck. I, I'm sorry that I already divulged who a part of the board is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Any, uh, can we move to public comment? If anyone has public comment on the Zoom, you can hit the raise your hand icon. No, Jason had one, but I think he signed off. So 
I don't see anybody else, Rob. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yes. A second. Okay. Uh, let's uh, do a roll call. Uh, we'll start with Eric. Yes. <laughs> Joe. Yes. John. Yes. Gordon. Yes. Munir, I. Thanks, everybody. Really Thank you. Uh, well, we're on. Thoughtful meeting. Thanks, everybody.